low altitude technology in the world's highest altitude plateau. Yes, my next guest is someone from Beijing, but who has decided to relocate for the time being permanently in Shizang Autonomous Region. He came here because of the special geographical conditions which would help the research and development of drones and unmanned aerial vehicles. But it was a difficult decision because he had to leave behind his family. Yet after he come here, he discovered a big family and lots of new friends. Let's meet my next speaker, Zhang Bo, chairperson and founder of Shizang Chuangbo Aviation Technology Company Limited. Mr. Zhang, welcome to The Point. First of all, um, help us understand your decision to come here and start a new enterprise. This is a rather um, geographically harsh area in Shizang. It's uh, over 4,000 meters by altitude. The air is very thin and the local educational level perhaps is not strong enough to support a high-tech company such as your, yours, which is specializing in aviation and drones. What's your consideration when you've decided to relocate to here in 2023? Uh, uh, China is a vast country, and many eastern provinces have invited us to take part in developing the low-altitude economy. But I believe the need is actually more urgent in the less developed western regions. In remote, sparsely populated areas, there's a strong demand for transport, inspections, and emergency response. In such places, one can only rely on winding mountain roads, traveling by car or on foot to cover the land. It's tough, but drones make that work much easier. That was the first reason we chose to come here. The second reason is technical. The plateau is the ultimate testing ground for UAV or unmanned aerial vehicles. The terrain, climate and geomagnetic conditions are all highly variable. It's a real challenge for any drone. Our goal is to refine and improve UAV technology here so these aircraft can move from the high plateau to the plains, from western China to the rest of the country, and eventually to the world. Exactly how high do you refer, are you referring to in terms of uh, altitude? By high plateau, I mean areas located above 3,000 meters in elevation. China is a vast country with many plateaus over 1,000 meters, including several high plateau regions. In fact, many other countries around the world also have high plateaus. It's good to test your machines and the aviation vehicles and drones, but it's very hard for human beings, especially from some, for someone who's not used to this kind of uh, living environment. When you made up your mind, was it difficult for you to decide to relocate here, leaving behind your, your family, your parents, your children? Looking back, deciding to make this move was really tough. It took over six months to convince my spouse, kids, parents, and even the friends and colleagues who joined us in starting this business. We had stable, fairly good-paying jobs doing drone-related R&D in Beijing. So people often asked, why come here? Actually, over the past decade or so, before we settled down here, we'd come to Shizong several times for emergency missions, helping local people, Tibetan communities, with things like firefighting, rescue work, and agricultural support. Mm. We cared deeply about this land and its people, and they also showed great enthusiasm for the practical uses of advanced technology. That feeling stayed with us all these years. When the opportunity finally came up to move from Beijing to Shanan on the Qinghai-Shizang Plateau, 
It was a really hard decision, not just for me, but for our whole team. After many discussions over half a year, we made the call. Now that we're here, we want to do it right. We have set up a full operation, from manufacturing and R&D to maintenance, training, and public education, working from all angles to serve the local community. So you actually left your small family behind to serve the Tibetan people here. Help us understand exactly what you are trying to build here. It's hard to sum up. There's just so much I want to do. But at the core, I hope children here can be exposed early on to the power of technology and what it can do for humanity. From a science education standpoint, I want them to witness the incredible progress our country is making in aerospace, from satellite launches to moon landings and the various spacecraft we've developed. I hope the local people can be exposed to it from an early age, be able to touch, interact with, and learn from these real-world high-tech applications. That's the most basic wish I have. In this process, what can these drones bring to them? For example, in agriculture, farmers once had to carry seeds and fertilizer up the mountains themselves to cultivate small plots of land. Now, with drones and unmanned vehicles, they can plow the soil, sow seeds, and apply fertilizer more efficiently and with far less physical effort. It's simple, but it's a practical shift that changes how the local Tibetan farmers work day to day. This change is both practical and meaningful. Or consider yak herding. The mountains are full of yaks, and when they go missing, tracking them down used to be extremely difficult. Now, drones with thermal imaging can easily locate them. People here have seen how effective this technology can be in solving real-world problems. That's from the perspective of development. Another example is infrastructure. We've built many power towers and solar installations in the region. In the past, heavy equipment had to be hauled up long, narrow mountain trails. Mules were used, and the process was slow and inefficient. Now, drones can quickly deliver materials directly to the mountaintops. This kind of technology helps speed up development in Shizang and makes the process much more efficient. After all, you're a high-tech uh, enterprise and China is pursuing high-quality development, uh, high-quality productive forces. You, besides bringing benefit to the local people, you also have to achieve uh, cutting-edge technology, right, that can be uh, disseminated and applied to people's daily life. What is the number one technological breakthrough that you have achieved by being here? Operating drones at high altitudes presents four key technical challenges. First, the low oxygen levels limit engine power. As altitude and terrain change, engine performance decreases and may even lead to engine shutdown. Second, the thin air reduces lift. The higher the altitude, the less lift drones can generate, which lowers their payload capacity. Third, the weather is highly variable. Conditions can shift rapidly from clear skies to strong winds, making flight unpredictable. Fourth, underground minerals could contain strong magnetic fields, which interfere with flight sensors and GPS signals. This can disrupt navigation and cause drones to lose their bearings. We are addressing each of these challenges. Gradually, our drones are becoming more reliable and effective in high-altitude environments, better serving the needs of local communities by providing supplies. Mm. Um, I understand you have already uh, filed for three international patents and 30 for domestic patents. Can you give us one example of, of one of these patents that you have managed to uh, achieve here, to realize here? We have a patented drone flight control for dual-rotor rotary-wing drones. 
It is quite challenging, especially when crosswinds hit. The drone must actively fight the side forces to stay stable. Through ongoing experience with crosswinds and turbulence, our flight control system has become increasingly adept at countering local weather conditions. This allows the drone to maintain a more stable and balanced flight, which is our greatest achievement. Oh, it's an international patient. Would you be confident enough to say that you are in a leading position in the world in terms of high altitude drones and aviation technology? I'm confident our drones have the world's highest payload to weight ratio. At high altitudes, payload capacity usually drops a lot. So this ratio is crucial. Our drone weighs 110 kilograms, but can carry 250 kilograms, which should be the world number one. Just now you talked about um, helping people. Um, I understand that a lot of the drones from your company were employed during the uh, rescue operation after a major earthquake in Dingzhu in January 2025. Uh, what exactly did you do? How were your technology being put to use to save lives and help people in desperate need? We received the news at noon and immediately packed and rushed to Dingra County. By the time we arrived, it was almost night. It was extremely cold, and there was no place to stay. What we saw was devastation everywhere, people taking care of their elderly and children. It was heartbreaking. Was this technology used before? Was this the first time the technology was put to use in rescue after earthquake? Okay. Please. We had already used it before, and it was a fairly mature technology, though this was the first time being used at such a high altitude. Following the command, we launched the drone equipped with infrared and thermal sensors for high-altitude inspection. If we found any injured people who had been missed, we would direct the rescue teams to their location so they could be pulled from the rubble. Mm. Do you have a um, um, statistic such as how many people you helped rescue, how many materials you have to transport? Because time was extremely tight, we had no prior data. The drone immediately transmitted suspected signs of life directly to the command center without any intermediaries. The rescue teams then carry out targeted operations based on our instruction. At night, we conducted search and rescue operations for missing injured individuals. During the day, we deployed a different rotary wing drone to map the terrain and assess mountain deformation, enabling an accurate and scientific evaluation of the earthquake's impact. It was January, so the weather was cold. Strong winds made it even harder to bear. Many survivors' phones were dead. We used unmanned helicopters to deliver large amounts of lithium batteries and fuel. This helped keep people warm. All in all, we dispatched three types of drones, each with a unique role. They were vital to the success of the three-day, two-night rescue mission. So in terms of talent, in terms of human resources and people, technicians, did you encounter difficulties when you started up here? And uh, how are you working to overcome these difficulties? What's your plan for the future? We have established an expert think tank here through Beihang University to provide intellectual support for our development. We also work with local Shan'an Vocational Training School to train young people in the area. We've set up specialized programs to teach them about aircraft and drones, their construction, maintenance, and operation, and help them study these subjects. Some drone enthusiasts also come here to get pilot licenses and other related permits. Through communication, we found that Tibetan students here show strong abilities in hands-on work. 
They learn repair and flight skills faster than we do. I'm very hopeful about their learning ability. They too are very happy about learning these things. We held the Xizang Division competition of the 9th National Youth Drone Competition. It was the first such game for Tibetan kids to participate. Many kids from Lhasa, Nachu, Shanan, and other places joined. They were very interested. It's fair to say that compared to other provinces, people in Xizong have less access to this kind of technology. When they build something with their own hands and make it fly, they feel excited and proud. Some even ask deep questions. For example, they wonder if changing the engine or power source can let the drone fly longer or never come down. They genuinely love building and making things. Some kids practice at home. Some even cry while practicing. They felt upset because they didn't meet their own goals. These kids have a special passion for science and learning. So your company, your being here, your presence here actually ignited the, the, the dream of a lot of young people here. How long do you plan, <laughs> plan to stay here? I know it's a difficult question, but uh, do you have an idea by which time you would say, okay, I have, I'm satisfied with what I've put in here? If possible, I would like to stay here. This is part of our dream as people from Beihong University, to serve the country through aerospace. At the same time, I love this land and the children here. Many times on weekends, these kids come here to learn, asking questions and eager to build things with the equipment here. I think they like me. For me, I love this place. I plan to bring my classmates and colleagues here to see it. The beautiful Yamdrak Lake and Yumbulagong Palace. I understand the feeling of being separated with your family, but uh, simply because you love what you do. Mm. This was pinned on me by my wife when I left to Shizong. Thank you so much for sitting down with us.